there, friends. Welcome back to Second Star to the Left. I'm Michelle, and this is my daughter, Billy. Hi. <laughs> Just... And here's where we'll share board game reviews, ramblings, and a few wrong turns along the scenic route. Your hand was in my way. It's time for our February wrap-up, and it was a small month where we talked about a lot of small box games and small spaces, and we made some pretty big changes. To start out, I just want to talk a little bit about what we got to do in February. We intended to have small month, small box games. Shortest month, smallest games, that kind of thing. And we started out with really good intentions. We had Button Shy Week, which is probably some of my favorite videos that we ever got to do. So if you get a chance, go check those out. Mm -hmm. They're some of my favorite games. And right now I'm very excited to be playtesting one that's coming out soon. Just lots of Button Shy excitement <laughs> around here. We also intended to do Tiny Epic Week. But Tiny Epic Dungeons didn't show up until recently. So now... There it is. This is over here. Other over there? No, first. Over here? Yeah, okay, it's go. over here. So now we're going to have a tiny epic week in March. We'll maybe make it into a bracket and do some March Madness. We are going to do a March Madness tournament with our Unmatched and hopefully have kind of a bit of a playthrough of that. We'll see what comes up in March. But we are going to get to the tiny epic games in ranking all of the tiny epic games that we have. I don't think we've missed any. Uh, no, I think it was, we were only missing mechs and dungeons, and we got mechs a while ago, so. Yeah. So we're just going to continue that small space theme a little bit further into March, which makes sense because, you know, we're in, in a small space. Part of what we did this month was rearrange our small space, which took up a lot more time than I thought it would but gave us a really good look at what's in our collection and what's on our shelves. It made some more space and freed up some shelves because, yep, some things are gonna go. Hopefully, by putting them where it makes a little bit more sense, we'll be able to play some of the older ones more often. We did some collaborations this month, which will come out soon. We have a small box games draft coming out with the folks over at Table Knots with Jash and Max and Doolin, and that was so much fun. So we hope to do some more of that. We did another one, but we're not gonna talk about that one just yet. Okay, let's get to some numbers. I'm not gonna go through all of our games every month because you've heard us talk about some of the ones that we play a lot. <laughs> So, you know, we play Jekyll versus Hyde a lot. <laughs> we played, and by we, I mean me. <laughs> me 45, 45 different plays of 30 games. And of those 30 games, nine of them were new to us this month. We got slowed down a little bit this month, especially Billy. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. So a lot of those plays were solo plays. Some of them were on Board Game Arena. Uh, a lot of them were just... Games that we were taking off our unplayed games shelf that, you know, needed to be played. So, I mean, nine of them were new. That's pretty good. Things just get a little slower, a little harder this time of year. Yeah, February. Plus, we were busy causing chaos in the game room. And when everything's off the shelves, that means everything's on the table. And it makes it a little bit harder to play. Mm. We tried not to buy too many games because as we were cleaning the shelves, we realized we have a lot of games. Rediscovering old games is just like buying new games. <laughs> just new. A lot of them only get played once or twice and then we move on to something else. So these feel like new games, but we did have seven games come in. Two of them are Kickstarters and a couple of games that we just... It wasn't anything big or fancy this month. It was just games that we saw or older games that we picked up. Like we picked up Point Salad. I feel like I'm forgetting something big we, i feel no, like there was something we didn't big. we didn't buy anything big we didn't and not even a big kickstarter came in i mean familiar tales came in that's so pretty big that's pretty big, that's pretty big. <laughs> we're gonna start that on uh wednesday yes we are starting familiar tales this week so we're really excited and billy is dragging me into a campaign game although this one didn't take too much coercing because i cannot wait to play this story 
We did, despite our best efforts, back not one, not two, but five <laughs> Kickstarters. Well, it number might be a little higher than that. Okay, I backed five <laughs> Kickstarters. I don't know what Billy's doing. Well, they were mostly RPGs, so it's like very small space. Do, it only do, takes up a small space. Do they count? Do they count? I don't know. That's your list. My <laughs> list does not have RPGs on it. It should. The five Kickstarters we backed, to be fair, one was Earth, which Billy describes as Evolution plus Res Arcana. I'm not sure that's really what it is, but it's an engine builder with this beautiful wildlife. I was in love at first sight. Yeah, so that was going to be easy, and it wasn't terribly expensive, so that one's reasonable, and we backed it. I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying... We were always going to back that one. We also backed Hens, which is by Little Rocket Games, because it had this just beautiful artwork of hens. And they described it saying, breed prize-winning hens in a puzzly abstract game. So I'm going to love a little puzzly game that's this beautiful. Hmm. My only real impulse buy Kickstarter was Seas of Havoc. Which, that was so yeah. cool. <laughs> and this is like deck building, worker placement, but mostly I bought it because it's piratey naval combat and it uses these chunky wooden meeples instead of miniatures. There's a kraken, there's a sea monster. Sharks? I don't oh, know. Oh, I think there were sharks, but. Sharks. It's sharks. <laughs> And I just really love that there are these screen-printed wooden meeples instead of minis. There's something really charming about it. And I'm hoping this is the game <laughs> that I kind of wanted from Survive Escape from Atlantis, which just didn't quite work, but I really liked all the little wooden <laughs> like whales and sharks. And, and I liked it. You liked it. It's just Connor and Dad that were kind of... It didn't go well. Uh, we also backed Evolution New World because, obviously... <laughs> Evolution is Billy's favorite <laughs> game, and every iteration of that will wind up on our shelves. And this is actually kind of an updated and extended version of their 2010 game, which was Evolution Origin of Species. So I think it's more of a card-based game. I think it's a card game. It Did it matter? Billy was going to make us buy whatever. Go ahead, publish a new Evolution game. I promise that we will buy it. <laughs> And the last one we backed was Rolling Heights by uh, John D. Clare and published by AEG. And it's a meeple rolling city builder. You had me at meeple rolling. It looks just really interesting and new and different. And it's John D. Clare, so I'm pretty confident that we're going to like this one. I think Jazz did a really good preview of this Kickstarter over on Lobby of Hobbies. So if you haven't checked that out, you might want to go have a look at it. Did you find your list? I did. I did find my list. How, how many did you back? Uh, only three this month. <laughs> so that's probably a personal best. And they're all RPGs? Yes. Are they horror RPGs uh, or space RPGs? Because that's pretty much it, right? Actually, only one is horror and only one is space. What's the third one? Uh, it's a uh, Kobold Press Tome of Beasts number three. It's just a big expanded monster manual for 5th edition. So sci-fi and horror and some monsters for D&D. Yes. Okay. I backed uh, For Small Creatures Such As We by Anna Blackwell, Dive by Jeremy Childre, and then Tome of Beasts number 3 from Kobold Press. Nice. You're going to need more shelves, too. Mm. Or maybe you should get rid of some of your old RPG books. <laughs> <laughs> If you think it's hard no. for me to get Billy to cull games, you should see what happens when I try to get her to cull books. I have my own whole bookcase full of them. Yes, that you do. So we didn't play as many games this month, but we did play some really good ones, and some of the new ones we played we really liked. So what was your favorite game that we played this month? Uh, the one that I instantly beat you at and have remained undefeated since. You're going to have to be more specific. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Santorini, New York. Santorini, New York. So, Santorini, New York came to our house. We do not own the original Santorini because I didn't think it was very attractive. <laughs> I didn't... I know lots of people like it, but the art in the original Santorini, I just... Uh, it just fell flat for me. And since we live just a 45-minute train ride, hour train ride from New York, this is like a hometown game. <laughs> I can't win Santorini online. That has been proven to me. <laughs> and guess what? I can't win Santorini at home either. So 
I don't know. I think I... You're, you're not great with, like, spatial awareness games. That's nice. <laughs> it's the trend. It's the theme. I have heard that some people don't like this one as much. However, I haven't played the original in person. I've only played the original one on board I've game. I've only Arena. played this one, but I can confidently say those people are wrong, and I'm right. Oh, My opinion's okay. better. Just all comments go right to Billy. <laughs> I like the theme of this one. I like the art of this one. If you can't really see, but look, there's this nice, like, Art Deco New York thing going on. I like that you're adding in skyscrapers. I like that there's cards. Uh, instead of the god powers, you have the, like, variable powers that everybody's using. And you like have a city hand card. workers and yeah, stuff. I yeah, I really like it. I have played, like I said, I've only played the other one online. So it's hard to make a comparison. But, but this one's so better. far, I like this one better. Also, just once. If I win, I swear I'll make a video just about how I finally won this <laughs> <Super Brady. laughs> Don't Don't count on it. I have two favorites this month. <laughs> it's cheating a little bit, but I do. The first one is Long Shot the Dice Game. Oh, uh, yeah. That is cool. It's super fun, and it's a roll and write. Apparently, there was a version of this that wasn't a roll and write, and it was serious and not all cute. And I don't know. I really love this game. It's so different than any other roll and write that I have. It's a racing game and you're betting on the horses and you can <laughs> trip the lead horse, you know, send it back a couple spaces. Or you can give your horse a boost <laughs> and move it up a few spaces. You have to be smart in how you manage your money, how you manage your bets. You can buy the horses. And it actually felt at the end like... A horse race. You were waiting to see who would get across that finish line. There was a nice tension to it, but it never took itself too seriously. Mm -hmm. So this was really fun. Has nice wooden screen printed horses that race around the track. I really enjoy this one. We've only played a little bit, but I cannot wait to play it some more. Oh. It's the same company wait. that made those... Roland... Right. But it's on the box right there. Yeah, it says rolling right on the box, too, but it says perplexed games. The so. box lied to me? The box lied to you. Oh. But we were waiting for this one for a really long time from Kickstarter. When it finally got here, this one did not disappoint. My second favorite is Rajas of the Ganges, the Dice Charmers, which we picked up at PAX and finally got around to. And I've been dying to play this game. I've heard everybody say that they like it. I thought this would be the version that we liked instead of the big game. I dragged Billy up to the room to play, got everything set up, learned how to play it, and about four rolls in realized Billy hates this game. <laughs> Hate is a strong word. Is it, is it that sigh of relief that you made when I said you don't have to finish this game? <laughs> just, just this literal, just this awful... <sighs> Because I said you didn't have to finish. I don't hate it. it just this means did not click with my brain. This means that Billy will never play Hadrian's <laughs> Wall. <laughs> oh no! You have a chance to get me to play Three Sisters. Though. I now have my doubts that you'll ever play Fleet. Maybe I can get you to play Three Sisters. You said this had no theme. This I is didn't say it had all ah, theme. Ah, I didn't say it had no theme. I said I couldn't connect with the theme. <laughs> Anyway, this game's really good solo, <laughs> which is good because it was one of my favorite things that we played this month, and Billy's never going to play this again. <laughs> I love the art. It was just hard for me to connect to what I, what I was doing to okay, why wait, I was doing it. So here's the thing. So I'm better at this game than you, <laughs> and so you're not going to play it with me. As if. Okay, folks. <laughs> Finally a game that I can beat Billy at, and you'll be shocked to learn. She doesn't <laughs> like it. Pure coincidence. <laughs> if you get a chance, give it a try solo or with someone else. If you like Rollin' Rights, I really enjoyed this one. Those are the games that we managed to get played this month and some of our favorites, which we clearly disagree on. <laughs> Surprise! We're looking forward to next month and a couple of kind of bracket tournament or March Madness 
board game version types of things. Maybe another collaboration. We got that fancy new camera stand so we could try it. We a... do. There is now the potential for actual playthroughs because we've worked out some of the kinks with the top-down recording. So fingers crossed that we can get that done. Some of the big things that we managed to do this month are maybe not big to everybody. <laughs> but super important to us and super exciting for us. And one of those things was we have a Discord now, which is a great place for everybody to get together, to talk about anything from board games to movies to books to sharing pictures of their pets. <laughs> but it's a really good way for anyone that's watching to connect and be able to talk. We share the Discord with Chrissy and Nick from Two Sheep, One Wheat, and with Jazz from Lobby of Hobbies. And if you haven't subscribed to their channel, please hurry up and go do that. They're great people putting out some really interesting content that's different from ours. So look, you can mix it up and get a little bit of everything. Plus, they're there in the Discord. Jump in and talk to us. They're really nice people. They're super nice people. And one of the other things that we did in connection with the Discord is to start a board game group on Board Game Arena, which means you can play with all these nice people in the Discord. You can jump on and learn a game if you want to with me. I will play Jekyll versus Hyde with you. Ask around. I do it. <laughs> Actually, I'll play with anybody that <laughs> asks me to play pretty much. But it's a really great place to meet people, to learn games, to figure out how to play games on Board Game Arena. So jump in and, you know, give it a try. Some of these games you don't have to buy. You can just play them online and get a feel for whether or not you like them. The last thing I want to talk about is the fact that now, if you care to, there is a way to support the channel. And that is that we have merchandise. So if you've ever wanted a constant reminder of Second Star to the Left, we now have t-shirts, mugs, tote bags, you name it. We have slapped a logo on it. It's a nice way to support the channel if that's something that you would like to do. Honestly, we just appreciate everybody watching and talking in the comments and on Discord, and we're really grateful for this giant, odd, and happy family that has been created here. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you like what you see... Or if you'd like to keep watching until we get one right... Then please like, subscribe, and share. If you want to find us on social media, including on Discord, all that information will be down below. As always... Open tables, open minds, and play yourselves. Bye! Also, what even is time anymore? <laughs> so, I'm not putting that in because you literally have said that in the last four videos. Yeah, well, <laughs> what even is time anymore? Why do I don't have brain problems? <laughs> it was. Uh, no, let's just. Uh. You don't have any like profanity written on there, right? Because no. you can totally read that. Wait, My two. Yep. It's one of them, Santorini, New York. No. Are okay, you sure? I am. <laughs> have you ever thought, wow, I'd like to have a reminder of Billy and Michelle with me all the time? <laughs> you can now have a shirt or it's a like mug. You're wearing us. <laughs> yeah. <it's... laughs> That was creepy. That was creepy and I'm not putting that in. Let's try this again. <laughs>